What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. So today, we're gonna to be drilling some big holes in the boat. We are gonna be installing the Lowrance Sonic Hub 2 Marine Audio Server with the two six and a half inch speakers that it comes with. I decided to go with this option. My kids are getting a little bit bigger. They like to be on the boat with me, so sometimes we're out there just tubing or relaxing, whatever we're doing. And I, you know, I thought it would be a good idea to get some music out there for us. I decided to go with this option. There's obviously many different options you go with as far as a radio or Bluetooth speakers, whatever the case is. I decided to go this route since we run nothing but Lowrance on the boat and I love the fact that I'm going to be able to control this through my HDS Live so I don't have to have any other you know, radio interface on the boat or anything like that. I'm going to be able to hide the module, which I will show you. Um, seems like a pretty straightforward install other than drilling two five and a half inch holes in the boat, which I don't think anybody looks forward to doing that. Uh, but other than that, seems very straightforward, seems like a pretty easy install. So let me get everything unboxed. I'll give you a look at what it comes with and then we'll get into uh, mounting the speakers, running the wiring and getting all hooked up. Let's get it unboxed. All right, so once you get everything taken out of the box, this is what you're working with. You get the Sonic Hub 2 Marine Audio Server itself. You get the wiring harness that plugs into the back, which I will show you. Looks like a whole bunch of wires, but honestly, guys, it's really not that bad. And again, I will walk you through step by step. You get the two six and a half inch speakers, two sets of the speaker wiring, the mounting hardware for the speakers. You get two gaskets, obviously one for each speaker. And then they also give you the cable and the T connector for the NEMA 2000 network. This is how you actually hook it up to your boat and power it up. All right, so that simple. And then of course you get the paperwork, you get um, installation, and then they also give you a template for cutting out the, uh, the holes for the speakers. It's a five and a half inch hole. That's all you need to know. Um, you can use the template if you want, but we're gonna be using a five and a half inch hole saw and uh, it's the perfect size hole to get these to get these mounted all right the speakers i'm not sure if i'm going to leave these white just real quick i may actually you can remove the face plate on these they're just held on by screws in the back here there's four screws that hold the face plate on i might actually take them off and paint them i don't know if i like that bright white but we're going to install it like this for now i may end up taking that off and, and and actually painting those but all right so let's get up in the boat i'm going to show you guys where we're going to mount them we'll drill the holes for the speakers and we'll start the wiring so let's get the hard part out of the way. Let's drill these five and a half inch holes and just get it behind us. <laughs> so what I did was I cut out one of the templates that come with the Sonic Hub 2. We're only actually gonna be drilling out that shaded area in the center. Again, it's a five and a half inch hole, but the entire thing with the outside included, that's the size of the speaker itself. So what I did was I got a position right where I wanted it. It's nice and centered in this location. Speaking of location, guys, there's obviously a few different options you can go with. I'm only going with two speakers for right now. So I'm putting one right here and then one on the other side um, by the driver, by the wheel, which again, you'll obviously see. So I just centered it right where I wanted it. And then you're just gonna take your five and a half inch hole, hole saw. So the speaker's gonna, that's like I said, this whole thing is the exact size of the speaker. So that's exactly how the, seek, the speaker's gonna sit in there. Once you have a position where you wanted it, or want it, I just took a couple pieces of tape, put it in place. So you're gonna take your five and a half inch hole saw, obviously has a, a mandrel in the middle, the drill bit there. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put the, the drill bit right in the center, which I don't know if you can see it on camera, but there are lines, they're dotted lines, so you can mark right in the center. That's where the drill bit is gonna go, and that's how we're gonna start drilling. Now we're gonna do this in reverse. Doing it in reverse is gonna give you, right, we're gonna start in reverse. I may start, I may go to forward, we'll see how it's, how it's cutting through, but start in reverse, and the reason you're gonna wanna do that is far less chance of your fiberglass either like cracking on you or chipping on you. It's just a much better way to do it um, you know, just to keep your fiberglass intact. Couple tips before we start doing this. First thing, the obvious, make sure you're wearing safety glasses when you're doing this. You're, you're cutting out a good chunk of fiberglass here. So you want to protect your eyes just in case, you know, a piece gets shot out or, or whatever the case may be. I'm actually going to wear a mask as well. Again, you're dealing with fiberglass. There's going to be a lot of dust here. So I'm going to have a mask on just to kind of protect myself, you know, the best I can. So safety glasses and a mask if you want. I recommend both glasses especially. The other tip I'll give you, which you're going to see, I'm actually going to get um, either my wife or one of my kids here. And I'm going, to I'm going to have them hold my vacuum underneath down here. So as the fiberglass is falling, it's just going to help minimize the mess, which you'll see here on video. They are also going to be wearing safety glasses and a mask, just so you know. All right, so let's get into it. 
One other tip I'll give you before we start drilling, make sure your mandrel or your drill bit in the center doesn't stick out too far past the top of the, um, the hole saw because you don't want to drill that hole. Obviously you don't want to go through the other side of the boat, but there may be wires behind there as well. So you just don't want to have that drill bit too far higher, too much farther higher than the, um, the hole saw itself. So my wife is in position with the vacuum. I'm going to get my She's got her mask and goggles on. I'm going to get mine on. It's going to get a little loud, but all I'm going to do is place the drill bit right in the center there. And we're going to start drilling in reverse. What I might do is I might actually start drilling a hole right there and then remove the template and then, you know, go from there. So let's do it. <laughs> All right, so after making this first hole, I highly recommend going in reverse like I did in the video. I only went forward just to get the, the drill bit started. Once that the drill bit popped through the center, here's the hole that we cut out. Once that drill bit kind of went through, I went back into reverse and I did the entire process in reverse. And you can see how clean this cut is. The fiberglass, I mean, I, the speaker is gonna fit right in there. It's, it's the perfect size hole, five and a half inch hole saw. It's absolutely perfect. Fits in there the way it should. But the fiberglass, the gel coat all around, it is, it is perfect. There's no cracks. There's no nothing. It's a clean cut straight through. And again, I went in reverse with the hole saw the whole way through. All right. Highly recommend that. And then all I did was just take a rag. I, You know, the vacuum thing definitely helps keep the mess a little bit minimal. Then I just took a damp microfiber towel wiped off the rest of the fiberglass and we're good to go i'm just going to go ahead and repeat the process on the driver's side and we'll go from there so same exact process on the driver's side i have it taped where i wanted it i got it nice and centered now on the driver's side you're going to have to be much more careful but there are a lot of wires back there so i'm going to go a little bit slower this time make sure i don't catch any of the wires and again that's why it's very important that your mandrel doesn't come out much farther farther than the top of the hole saw all right so we have it taped in place i'm going to get my my glasses on my wife has the the vacuum in place i'm going to get my safety glasses and my mask on and we'll drill out this hole so as you can see that's the reason you need to be very careful on the driver's side all of your wiring whether it's from your fish finders or whatever the case may be all of the wiring is right there behind the driver's side so just take it nice and easy go in reverse and take your time nice clean cut Again, the gel coat all the way around there. It's not cracked. It didn't chip at all on me by going in reverse. So that's really the key. But on this driver's side, be very, very careful when you're going through there just because of the wiring. So now that we have the two speaker holes drilled, before you actually physically mount the speakers, we, of course, have to run the wires for the speakers. So now what you need to do, you need to decide where you're going to mount your uh, marine audio server your sonic hub to the actual module i'll show you this is obviously a 2018 nitro z18 so depending on your boat you're gonna have to pick a spot wherever you want it if you have a nitro i'll show you where i'm gonna mount mine my fire extinguisher so we're on the, the driver side the starboard side rod locker my fire extinguisher was mounted right here it's only held on by two screws so i just removed that i'm gonna relocate that this is a perfect spot for me to mount the sonic hub module so i'm ne i need to run the speaker wires into this location in order to do that the driver side speaker is going to be very very simple all i'm going to do is run my wire fish up through there and if you run your wire fish through the through the gunnel right there it's actually going to pop out up underneath here where you can see all my other wire, hopefully see. I know it's kind of dark, but it's gonna pop out right up in that corner. So that speaker is gonna be very simple to run the wiring. The passenger side speaker might be a little different story. 
it's not going to be hard it's just a little bit more involved so i have to feed you can see i have my wire fish here already started to you know kind of feed down into the hole there so what i'm going to do i'm going to have to run my wire fish down through here and the way i'm going to feed these wires i'm going to remove this black panel and also that black panel just to give myself a little more room to work in order to remove those two panels they're only held on by three phillips head screws one two three same thing on the other side if you remove those three screws it gives you much more room to work with so let me go ahead and get that done and i'll show you what we're working with all right guys to get the passenger side the port side speaker wire over to where it needs to be you can see i have my wire fish popping out here so let me show you how i routed it again if you're not in a nitro this is going to be a different process for you but if you are in a nitro and you want to do it the same way i'll walk you right through what i did so we moved removed those two tool holders that i mentioned only held on by three phillips head screws we also have to come in here as you can see i removed the cup holders that one's already gone to remove them the silver trim piece just twists and pop right off. And then they're only held on by three Phillips head screws. You remove those three Phillips head screws and you can take out the cup holders. Okay, so now as you can see, one, two, they're both removed. So what I did was I took my wire fish, fed it down through here, and it's gonna go behind your cooler. I'll give you a look down in here. See if I could wiggle the wire fish so you could see it. You can see it right there, okay? See it wiggling right there? So. You feed it down through there, and then you can feed it. It's gonna run underneath here. You could probably see it down there, maybe. I don't know if I could, I don't know if you'll get a look at it, but anyway, it's gonna run basically in through that corner, down behind the cooler, and then it's gonna pop out back underneath here. Now these other wires that you're seeing, let me see if, uh, my wire fit here it is my wire fish is down here so you can see you know and then it, it'll shoot over it's behind this drawer back in there and then it comes up the gunnel and out here so now i can tie my speaker wire to this end and feed my speaker wire all the way through and have it pop out back over here so that way all we need to do is just drill another small hole right here and it'll pop out into my passenger i'm sorry my starboard my driver side rod locker where the module is going to be mounted the other wires that you're seeing in here real quick just so if anybody's asking or questioning what these are i have leds underneath here um you know when i hit the button to turn them on my tool holders light up and everything so that's what those other wires and stuff in there you're not going to have them that's what they are for me all right so that's how i'm going to pull the passenger side speaker wire over into where the module is going to be mounted now that we have the wiring pulled through which is this green and black wiring right here let me give you a better look you could probably see it better than that fish tape so as you can see as i mentioned it runs down in through there and you can see where that green and black right there it shoots straight across you can see the green and black right there it comes over there's a space right back in here so as you can see the green and black running right down through there runs straight across behind that drawer and then eventually out that hole all right so now that we have that done i'm going to get this passenger side speaker mounted and hooked up to the wiring the speaker wire just so my wiring doesn't pull through by accident so let me go ahead and get th this speaker mounted in order to do that i'm just going to put it up there mark my my four mounting holes which i'll show you real quick and then we'll get the screws in Okay, so in order to get the speaker mounted, all we're gonna do, I'm gonna take the speaker itself, I'm gonna pop it in there. My speaker wire is hooked back there. Just so you guys, if you're wondering where the speaker wire went to, I have it hooked back there so it can't fall anywhere or get pulled through. So I'm just gonna put the speaker in there, make sure the Lowrance is nice and straight, nice and even. And then all we're simply gonna do is we're gonna take a 9 60 fourths drill bit i'm almost positive that's the size i'll put it on the screen i'm going to double check that i'm almost positive that's the size but i will double check my case to see which one i grabbed and i'll put it on the screen for you so all we're going to do is drill out the four pilot holes for the four where the four mounting screws are going to go all right so i'm just going to hold the speaker in place and i'm going to do this in reverse again just like i did when i was drilling the big hole 
It just, it's better for the fiberglass. It won't chip as easy. So I'm gonna start in reverse. And then once I have, once I'm gone through the gel coat, I'm gonna then put it in forward. And just nice and easy. Drill through just like that. Don't put too much pressure, just nice and slow speed with the drill, light pressure. And when I take the speaker out, I'll show you. I bet you that hole is perfect. There's no chips in the gel coat or anything like that. So I'm gonna go ahead around and do that for the other three holes. Reverse first. Just until you're through the gel coat, then put it in forward, nice and slow speed and light pressure. I'll put a picture up on your screen just so you guys can see, but those pilot holes are perfect. No chipping, no cracking on the gel coat, nothing like that. So now all we're gonna do is feed, you're gonna take one of the gaskets that come with your kit, feed the wiring through that. And this is held on by double backing tape. So all we're gonna do is remove the backing and we're gonna place it with the four pilot holes lined up, obviously with the holes that we drilled. So the gasket has four holes in it. So we're just gonna go ahead and set this in place, lined up with the four pilot holes that we just drilled. And now we are ready to connect the wiring to the speaker and mount the speaker. So you have a green and a black. The green is gonna be your positive. And on the back of the speaker, you can see you have two prongs here. They are labeled positive and negative. You probably can't see it on the video, but it's labeled right back in the middle. This is your positive, that's your negative. So the green goes to positive and black goes to negative. So now that we're connected in the back, we're just gonna place the speaker. Make sure the holes are lined up. Make sure you don't catch your speaker wire. You know, make sure the wire is obviously tucked all back in there. And then line the speaker up with the holes. And we're going to take the supplied Phillips head screws and just secure the speaker. So what I like to do is I like to get all four of them started. So I already have three in. This is the fourth one. So just get all four of them started before you tighten any of them down. That way, if you need to adjust the speaker at all, you can. Now, what I'm gonna do is I never tighten down, especially in the fiberglass, I never tighten screws down with the drill. I'm gonna grab my handheld, tighten them down by hand, and this speaker is ready to go. So the only thing I've done off camera, other than put my tool holders and my cup holders back in, I drill the hole through this wall. This is my active target module. So I just drilled a hole right up here that popped out into this area underneath here where my speaker wire was and I just fed my speaker wire through that hole. I used a quarter inch drill bit for that. You're never going to see it with the carpet and everything in there. So don't be afraid to go, you know, just a little bit bigger so you can get that speaker wire through there. Again, I used a quarter inch drill bit. All right, guys, on to running the driver side speaker wire. So again, in the nitro, it's fairly simple. I have my wire fish right here, just fed up in that little corner back there, there's an opening where you could clearly see all the other wires coming out of there. And you just push it straight through and you'll be able to get it to pop out the hole that we drilled. So I'm just gonna attach my speaker wire, pull it through, and we'll get this speaker mounted the exact same way as I did the other side. I won't show that on camera just to save time. So let me go ahead and get that all done and we'll get to wiring up the module. Before we get to actually wiring the module power harness, we do have to run the NEMA 2000 cable as well. If you're unfamiliar with NEMA 2000, I do have a video on the channel going over the network in detail and how it differentiates from the Ethernet system. I see a lot of confusion on that. I'll put a link to that video up above you if you have any questions on the NEMA 2000 network. So basically my backbone, my NEMA 2000 backbone is up underneath my console here. So I'm gonna have to run from underneath my console 
into where we have the Sonic Hub 2 module, where we have the speaker wires. All right, so that's all I'm going to do. There's a little opening. I'll put a picture on your screen. There's an opening up underneath your console where you can feed your wire fish through, um, you know, to pull your NEMA 2000 cable from the rod locker where the Sonic Hub 2 is underneath the dash. So now that I have my NEMA cable ran from the battery, or I'm sorry, from the rod locker, I'm just going to go ahead and connect it to my T and I'm gonna put my T in my backbone for my NEMA 2K network. All right guys, so now that we have both speaker wires ran into the rod locker, we have the NEMA 2000 cable ran into the rod locker, basically all we have left to do is deal with the wiring harness and then we'll mount the module and plug everything in where it goes. This wiring harness can look a little intimidating, especially if you're not familiar or good with running wires, but it's actually very simple and I'm gonna show you exactly what you need to do for this basic setup with just two speakers. Okay, so obviously the back of the Sonic Hub module, you're gonna look like this. The red port there, that's for the NEMA 2000. That's where you're gonna plug that NEMA 2000 cable into. All of these other ports over here that are covered with black caps, in my setup, we're not even gonna use these because again, we're only running two speakers. We're just sticking with kind of a basic setup. I'm not gonna have any external amplifiers or subs, or I'm not gonna be running any video output or input, nothing like that. That's what the rest of these ports over here are for. And the, and the instructions that come with the module will go over all that if you're interested in doing that. Again, my setup is basically, it's, it's basic two speakers and that's it for right now. We may add more in the future. If we do, I'll keep you guys posted and I'll do an update. The power harness, the wiring harness that comes with the Sonic Hub is gonna plug into this spot right over here. It's the only spot that it'll fit, obviously. All right, so before we mount the module and connect all the wires, let me show you what you need, the wiring that you need to worry about on this harness. Again, a lot of these wires we're not even gonna use because we're not running all of that extra stuff. So all we need to worry about on this entire harness is the red and yellow, which if you guys are familiar with Lowrance, you know that yellow wire is what Lowrance calls a wake up wire. For my application and for the way I wanna rig this up, I'm actually gonna take my red and my yellow, tie them in together, and then run an extension from that underneath my console and, and plug it into the positive end of my bus bar. And I'll show you this once I get it all done. The reason I'm gonna do that the main power switch on my boat controls that bus bar. So when at the end of the day, when I turn off my main power switch to the boat, that bus bar also gets turned off. Nothing that is hooked into that bus bar will get power. So in other words, I turn that main power switch off, my Sonic Hub 2 gets powered off, it's not drawing on my battery. All right, so that's just the way I'm gonna wire it up. There are different ways you can do this. I highly recommend doing it that way. I would just tie these two together and run them to a switch, whether whether it's a, um, a separate switch or you just run it to a bus bar like I'm going to that's already controlled by a main switch. Either way, you can do it either way. Just as long as it's on a switched power source, don't run it direct to the battery. The Sonic Hub will never turn off. <laughs> um, and it, it'll constantly be drawn on your battery. Black is obviously your ground. That's gonna go to the negative side of my bus bar underneath the console. Okay, so red and yellow go to positive on the bus bar. Black goes to negative on the bus bar. The only other two sets of wires out of all this jumbled mess, you have two wires that are tied in together by a, by a sticker. Um, it's a white and a white with the black stripe. And then you have a gray and a gray with the black stripe. These are your speaker wires for zone. There's little decals on them that say zone one. One says zone one left, the other says zone one right. Doesn't really matter which one you hook into what speaker. Um, and then on the back, it actually tells you what's positive and what's negative, so you can't really screw it up. So all we're gonna do with these wires, let's just start with the white and the white with the black stripe. You're gonna take one of your speaker wires, one of your sets of speaker wires. So let's, this one, this set of speaker wires is from my um, the passenger side. So you're just gonna take the green, which is the positive from the speaker wire, hook it into the solid white. You're gonna connect it to the solid white, which is the positive from your harness. And then you're gonna take the black from your speaker and connect it to the white with the black stripe from your, from your harness, okay? That's how you're gonna connect the passenger side speaker. The driver side speaker, the the wiring is down there so i'm just gonna so the driver side speaker you would just take the green from the that speaker connect it to the solid gray take the black from that speaker and connect it to the gray with the black stripe okay positive and negative 
that's it's as simple as that all of these other wires we are not going to deal with we don't again we're not dealing with any extra um, mics external mics or amplifiers or subs or nothing that's what the rest of these wires are for all right i'm not doing that on my on, in my in my install so if you're looking for that information it is in the instructions it's just not something i'm covering because i'm keeping my setup simple with just the speakers just at first anyway just to see how they sound so once you have all that those wiring connect the wires connected the way i just showed you I'm going to use waterproof butt connectors. That's what I use for all of my connections. If you guys follow my channel, you know that. I don't care what I'm wiring. I always use wire, waterproof butt connectors. So I'm going to make my connections that way with the two sets of speaker wires. And all we got to do is run that power in the ground to underneath the console, which I'll show you once this is all done. Plug this into the module, mount the module, and we're done. We'll fire it up and see how it works. So let me get this wiring done. I'll give you a, one last look at everything, and we'll fire it up, see how it sounds. All right, we are just about done, guys. So we have the positive and the negative. That's gonna hook up to the bus bar that I mentioned underneath my console. Red is obviously gonna go to the positive terminal with a five amp fuse. Black is gonna go to the negative on the bus bar. Number 10, ring terminals. Everything I use, right down to the wiring, the connections, everything is marine grade. Just so you guys know, you definitely wanna go that route with any kind of wiring you're doing on your boat. So number 10 ring terminals, all marine grade, they're tinned. Um, the other end of this, I fished through and connected. So here we have the harness. Let me get the camera a little bit closer for this part. All right, so here you can see, this is the positive that, that I just showed you coming from underneath the dash, ran to the yellow and red from the harness. Again, yellow and red are tied in together in one end of the butt connector. The red that goes underneath the dash comes out the other side. Um, weatherproof butt connector. And then I also use weatherproof heat shrink um, on, on, on all my connections as well. The black from the harness. Black from the harness is going to the black or the negative that's going underneath the dash. Okay. All of these wires are the ones that we're not using for all those extra components that I mentioned. The two speakers are tied in right here. So what I did was the white and the white with black coming off of the harness, that says zone one left speaker. So I made that the passenger side because when I'm in the driver's seat, the left would be the passenger side. So I took the green from the passenger side speaker, tied it into the um, all white from the harness, the black from the passenger side speaker into the white with the black stripe from the harness. And then the driver side speaker is plugged into zone one right speaker. So the green from that speaker on the driver side goes to the solid gray. The black from the speaker goes to the gray with the black stripe. Okay, those are the only connections you have to make on the harness. So now that we have that all done, all I'm gonna do is take my harness, plug it into the module. I'm not gonna mount the module just yet until we turn it on and make sure it's all working properly because <laughs> that would suck all right so you can hear that kind of clicked in place let me grab my nema 2000 connection right here just going to plug it into the red port as i mentioned earlier so we'll just screw that in make sure it's in there nice and tight all right so now all i have to do is take the positive and negative underneath the console hook it to the bus bar we'll hit the main power switch and make sure everything's working all right, let's fire this thing up, see what we got. So we're gonna turn on the main power switch to the boat, which will power up that bus bar. Let's turn on one of the HDS 12s here. We'll let this boot up. I'll fast forward through this part just so you don't have to watch this boot up real quick. Let's click accept like you always have to do. I have two different mapping charts in here. My C-Maps, Contour Plus and Navionics. We're just gonna click no on that. And let's go, actually, whatever, that, I don't think that screen's going to matter. So you can see we now have an audio bar over here. Under, my power pole charge is there, my ghost trolling motor, and now we have an audio button. So let's click on that. We're going to learn this together, guys. This is the first time we're doing this. It says audio off, so let's hit the power button. Connecting the Sonic Hub 2. You can see right there in red, it says connecting the Sonic Hub 2. Uh, let's see. Okay, so here's all the things that you can do. AM, FM, you can hook an iPod directly into it. It has two different USB 
um, ports on the module itself, which I, I mounted mine in the rod locker. I'm going to be using it for Bluetooth. So let's come down here and click Bluetooth. And I, this is where we're going to have to go into your settings on your phone. So just go into Bluetooth. And I'm guessing Sonic Hub is going to show up in here. There it is right there. Okay. So down here, Sonic Hub 2, I'm just going to click on it. It should connect, hopefully. I'm getting a message that says allow con. Oh, holy cow. Okay. <laughs> We're up and running. Wow. That actually sounds pretty good for just having two speakers. <laughs> um, so hey, let me let me just pause this for a second. Um, I don't know how well that's going to turn out on video, but as soon as I click that in the, my Bluetooth settings, it obviously connected as you saw and fired right up hooked into my Pandora, which is what I always listen to on my phone. Um, again, I don't know how well that audio is going to show up, but man, <laughs> that actually sounds pretty good for just having two speaker, two 50 watt speakers in the boat. Um, let me, let me play with this real quick and I'll show you a couple features on it. Again, this is the first time I'm doing this, so we're going to kind of learn this together. Um, but obviously down here you have the power button, which is what we clicked to turn it on. Um, you have a mute button, you have the volume button, Let's see what happens there. Let me go back and we're going to press play. It's going to get kind of loud, so I'm not going to talk much, but I'm going to press play and then I'm going to mess with the volume a little bit. Hopefully it turns out on, uh, on camera for you. Wow, <laughs> we only went to volume 75, and that is loud as can be. I I'm going to be able to hear that flying down the lake over the Mercury, um, over the Opti. That's actually way louder than I was expecting for just two speakers, guys. I'm, um, <laughs> I I'm To say I'm happy with that is, is an understatement. That's awesome. I don't think I'm going to add anything else to it. That is plenty for me and the kids and the family when we're out on the boat. Obviously, there's other options in here. Let's click on settings. Eh, we're not going to have to do much in there. This looks like an equalizer. Yep, you can come in here and play with the bass, mid, treble. If we click on master control. Right now, we're only hooked into zone one, so you can probably turn zone two off. That doesn't really matter, I guess. Um, but yeah, man, that's actually, that's awesome. <laughs> so there you have it, guys. The install, as I showed you, pretty straightforward, and I am... 100% satisfied just in the 30 seconds that I've heard this hooked up to my phone, you know, with the Pandora. So now I'm going to be able to mount my phone right there. I have a USB charger here. I can plug my phone in, play it through the, uh, you know, through the, the Sonic Hub 2 while I'm out on the water. If, if I have the kids out with me or whatever the case is, that's pretty sweet. Highly recommend this, guys. I mean, if anything happens, you know, as we're going on, as always, I'll keep you guys updated if I run into any issues. But you saw it there, super easy to connect to. All I did was go into my Bluetooth settings, hit Sonic Hub 2, fired right up and connected to my Pandora. Um, and again, you can see all the other options you have. The the auxiliary, auxiliary 2, mic, those, that's all those other wires that I was showing you guys. But also AM, F, FM radio, iPod, USB, you know, the whole nine yards. It actually has a Pandora button right here. Let me see what happens if I click on that. I don't know if anything's going to happen there just because Oh, actually okay, it's going to go it's going to play through my phone anyway. Now, I don't have any kind of Pandora subscription or anything. I just have the free Pandora where you get the ads and stuff like that, but so I guess you can either click on Pandora or Bluetooth to play it through your phone. Um doesn't sound audio-wise doesn't sound any different, so I guess that doesn't really matter, but you actually have a little thumbs up or thumbs down button right here if you're if you're um familiar with Pandora you hear a song you like give it a thumbs up so they know you know that's the kind of music you like to listen to but all right guys I'm gonna wrap this up um that's awesome I think we're gonna leave it at two speakers for sure see what happens over the next uh you know month or two out on the water with this thing I'll keep you guys posted if I run into any issues but man I'm pretty impressed with this so far so I would highly recommend this you guys have any questions comments concerns leave them down below we'll get them addressed we'll see you on the water take care